Okay, what I want to show is doing a relative compression test with the uh, Ver snap on Varus using an amp probe and the amp probe that I'm using is uh, just a typical one that comes with the kit. It's a low amp probe and I'm going to set it to um, a 60 amp 60 amp setting which is uh, 10 millivolts per amp is the conversion. You need to know that for setting up your scope. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this amp probe to the battery cable that goes to the starter. With the, with the correct polarity. And so that, that amp probe is connected right there on the battery cable. So I'm going to actually do a compression test from the battery. I'm not going to remove a spark plug. I'm going to be able to identify uh, that I have a compression problem. The scenario would be the vehicle comes in with a misfire. You're not sure if it's spark fuel compression. And it's a quick way to identify whether or not you have good compression in the engine. So the setting again, amp probe to the battery. Come down to the scope. We'll go to the scope multimeter. Show you where I was. I picked uh, volts DC. I'm not picking my amp scales because I'm going to be reading uh, a couple hundred amps, not 20 or 40 amps. So DC volts is is my my selection, and I'm going to set it to a two volt scale. The reason I want to use a two volt scale, if you do the math, with 10 millivolts being one amp, two volts equals 200 amps. So whatever I'm seeing on the screen is a the equivalent or the scale is zero to 200 amps. Okay. Move this line down and we'll crank it and take a look at it. All right, one thing I did wrong is my time base is too fast. I want to be on a two second scale. I like two seconds. The other thing that I forgot to mention is we disabled the fuel so the car doesn't start. One more time, go ahead. Keep cranking. Keep cranking, keep cranking. All right, that's good. What you're looking at on the screen, it's a little bit, uh, it's got a little bit of hash to it, but that's okay. What you're looking at on the screen would be the compression humps that are created, generated by uh, the starter motor encountering those forces of compression. As the starter rotates, it will encounter the same forces you do if you try to turn a crankshaft by hand on the compression stroke. It becomes more difficult, amperage is going to rise, so each spike represents cylinder compression. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull a spark plug out and we're going to take a look at it. Uh, the before and after. So this would be an engine that, relatively speaking, has good compression. If you look at the humps, um, you just want to see nice, even, uniform uh, heights in these, and there's a little bit of differences in them. This car does have a bad head gasket, so uh, you know we are using a demo vehicle. But uh, relatively speaking, these look good. And this is a six-cylinder engine, so you really just kind of count your humps, say one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it doesn't matter which one's which on here. The fact is we see even uniform compression humps on this motor. So again, I'm going to pull a spark plug out next, simulating a compression problem. All right, I got the spark plug out now. And so what we have is one completely dead hole, no compression in one of the six cylinders. Uh, I've disabled the ignition now at this point because I have a spark plug wire off and I don't want that plug wire laying with nowhere to go and all that energy built up in the coil. I don't want to damage the coil. And uh, can you go ahead and crank that for me? Okay. So two things I want you guys to to do first thing is did you hear the way the car cranked did you hear the inconsistency in that crank once your ear is trained to that sound it almost at times will eliminate the need to do this test if you have a car that comes in with a misfire and it's cylinder specific and you disable the car so it doesn't start whether it be clear flood mode unplug the coil unplug the injectors and you crank the engine over and you hear that sound that's, that's no compression in one of the cylinders. You wanna hear it one more time? Go ahead, crank it for me one more time. Let's listen to it. Just listen. All right, get used to that sound, number one, okay? Number two, take a look at the waveform. 
So what we had before was six even uniform humps on the screen, didn't we? Count them, I'll just start here. One, two, three, four, five. We're missing one. One, two, three, four, five. You're missing one. So what is this area in here? You have no compression on one cylinder. Which cylinder is that? On this method, no way to know on the screen. So you would need another way to tell you which cylinder that was. If it was an OBD2 car, would we have a, uh, a cylinder specific misfire trouble code? Yes, we would. If it wasn't OBD2, could you do an RPM drop test, shorting plug wires out one at a time, or unplugging injectors one at a time to figure out which cylinder wasn't contributing, and then say, that's my guy with no compression, the answer is yes. So that's it, it's a basic test, amp probe to the battery cable, we're just looking at starter current, and we're using this to tell us that we have a compression problem, and we never took a spark plug out to put a gauge in to make that measurement, we have a dead hole here for sure. You would not do a tune up on a car like this, you wouldn't put an injector in it, you wouldn't put a coil in it, you have a compression problem able to be identified very quickly. There's another method, it's a little bit more complex, I'm going to show that one next. Okay, this time we're doing a relative compression test and we're going to use a second channel to synchronize our relative compression hump waveforms that we're looking at. Our starter current waveform, we're going to synchronize it with the ignition system. I am using the uh, SIA 2000 tool as my second channel. I have one lead connected from it and I'm just simply going to one plug wire. I know which plug wire, it's the number one plug wire. Doesn't have to go to the number one, but uh, you need to know where you're connecting it to. And uh, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna have amperage coming in, amperage readings from the starter on the second channel, the green trace, and the yellow trace is gonna be my ignition firing of the number one spark plug wire. This is a waste spark system, so what you're gonna have is on compression, you're gonna have a high firing KV, and on exhaust, you're gonna have a low firing KV. That's important in cylinder identification once we plug in the numbers. All right, as far as the channel setups go, channel one, I have set on an ignition on 20 KV. Uh, I'm peak detecting it because I wanna see the high-low waveform. Uh, inverted is going to depend on if it's positive or, or negative firing, so if your lines are upside down, you can just invert it. Channel 2 is my amp probe, and I'm doing the conversions again. Uh, I picked a 2 volt scale because 2 volt scale on this amp probe that is set to a, let's see if we can see that, this amp probe that is set to a 60 amp scale, which is 10 millivolts is one amp. Two volts will equal 200 amps. So that's my setting. I'm on the battery cable with the amp probe as with the other one. Channel two, I'm gonna filter it. I don't need all the noise that's in there. And uh, that should be good to go. I have the ignition system not disabled. That's important when you're doing this. We need the ignition to be active. So I have the injectors unplugged on a main bulk connector. This is a, a V6, a GM 3100 engine. Doesn't really matter uh, which model. It's just the fact that this is a V6 is important. And uh, that should be good to go. All right, go ahead and crank it. Okay. Another important aspect of this, I don't know if you heard that, uh, that the battery was starting to get weak. Uh, that can affect this test greatly, but this is good enough for what we're trying to do. You see the yellow trace is actually your number one cylinder firing. So this is number one, this is number one, this is number one, this is number one, all the way across. And uh, what you're looking at is low, high, low, high, low, high. That would be what you would expect from a waste spark system where it's firing on compression and it's firing on exhaust. So you plug this in, what we've done is we've used the yellow trace, this, this uh, ignition adapter, and we've synchronized the starter current, which is a representation of our relative compression in the cylinders. We've synchronized it, so the yellow trace is our sink and our green trace is our amperage from our starter. And Number one on compression, again, is when the spike is high. 
And so that this is the number one cylinder right here on compression. This, this hump right here would be the number one. So the next thing you would need is the firing order. We looked up the firing order already on this car. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a very easy one. And you see this would be one. The missing cylinder, which is our, our, uh, our valley here, this gap. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and it starts over. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see that cylinder number two has no compression. And when would this test be valuable? Again, would be the vehicle does not have cylinder specific misfire trouble code you, you can't go by. So you need to know what cylinder, it, what cylinder it is, or it might be a vehicle that the intake manifold covers all of the ignition components and injectors and you can't do an RPM drop test and figure out what cylinder is dead. So there is a way to synchronize it, very valuable test. Again, using the Snap-on SIA2000 adapter, ignition adapter, the Varus, and a low amp probe. Preferably a high amp probe if you have one, but I'm showing you that the low amp probe one does work on, on this setup. One other thing that would be valuable to know is the connections on, on the back of the, of the Varus. I'm actually only using two of the channels. So you could do this same test on the Snap-on Vantage Pro. Uh, the ignition adapter actually has a third channel that, that you're supposed to hook up. Um, I don't need it for doing a single cylinder test. The, the way this thing's designed, just very briefly, is you have a negative and a positive side to this tool and there's four different adapters that would plug into that. What you need to know about this is these two would be on, on one channel and these two would be on another channel. So if you're using all of them, only then would you need to connect that green trace up. So the tool comes with, with three adapters. One's the ground, uh, the yellow is the negative side of this tool, and the green is the positive side of this tool. And I only needed one channel, so I didn't have to hook it up. I think that's important to know that you can do this same test on the Vantage Pro, which is a two-channel scope, uh, that we're doing here with our four channel scope. You just leave one of the channels unplugged. So that's it, relative compression test on the Snap-on Varus. Identifying, synchronizing starter current with ignition waveforms. There's other ways to do it on other systems. This is how you do a waste spark.